Good morning to you wherever you are and welcome to another Four Spice Morning Programs here at the Government Information Service. I am Sherry and Noel. It is indeed a pleasure to be with you once again. It is Monday, Monday the 15th day of November 2021. It's the day after we observe Remembrance Day where you, you know, wreaths were laid at the Botanical Gardens in memory of those Grenadians who served at World War one and two. Lots of information to share with you this morning, but first off, let's take in the devotional segment. As I consider the world that we live in, I realized that many persons profess to love persons. So you would find men will say to women, I love you. You know, parents will tell their children, I love you, and so on. Many of them express their love by buying rose, buying chocolate, a husband may buy something significant for his wife, and so on. But today, friends of mine, there is God. And God said in his word, according to John chapter 3 and verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Many persons, as they look around and they see all the ills and negative things that are happening in the world, they will question the love of God for man from time to time. But the Bible reassures us that God loves this earth and this is very comforting as a human being because you and I make up what is known as the world and so my friends as you go through the day today you can be comforted and assured that you are loved by almighty God and he cares so much for you that he sent Jesus Christ to save you and to save me and so with this great assurance, let your heart and mind be at peace today, knowing that God is there, he loves you, and he cares for you, and he has demonstrated this love by sending his son to die for you and I. And so today, I wish you well, and I pray that you will bask in the glory of the fact that God loves and cares for you eternally. Have a wonderful day. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace and love. We pray, dear God, that as individuals, as human beings, we would recognize your love for us in our lives. And we would respond, Lord, to your love by giving our hearts to you. Father, bless each and every one of us today and help us to continue to trust you. For this we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. the most common causes of spreading the flu. Cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue, dispose of it straight away, and either wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And we say thank you very much to Pastor Samora Best there for the devotional segment this morning. As we head on down to the Morris Bishop International Airport, the Met Office to be exact, to say good morning to Mr. Jerry Tamer, who's standing by via the telephone to share with us the public forecast for today. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you. Good morning to all your listeners and viewers. Well, don't hear the points so these conditions are fair. The winds are from the northeast at 16 miles an hour. Barometric pressure is now 13.2 millibars, and that is normal. Uh, current temperature 27.7 Celsius. Relative humidity is 78%.
during the last 24 hours. Maximum temperature recorded was 31.7 degrees, and a minimum was 26.3 degrees Celsius. During that same period, we had only a trace of rainfall down here at Point Celine, hence the total for the month remains at 12.7 millimeters. Let us now turn our attention to the public forecast, and this is valid for today and tonight for Grenada Caracol and the PT Martinique. We can expect conditions to be generally fair and breezy with a few light nighttime showers. Winds easterly to east, northeasterly at 12 to 22 miles an hour. Seas moderate to rough, waves up to 8 feet in open waters, and I'm with northeasterly and easterly swells. Uh, we just had a high, a low tide, sorry, at 6:49. So the next high tide would be at 10 minutes past one this afternoon. Maximum temperature today should get up to around 31.5 Celsius. We have sunsets this afternoon at uh, 5.40. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 5 minutes after 6. So just to repeat the public forecast, remember it's valid for today and tonight for Grenada Caracol and the Pity Martinique. Conditions are expected to be generally fair and breezy with a few light nighttime showers. The seas moderate to rough waves up to 8 feet in northeasterly swells. And the marine advisory remains in effect. So, from the Met Office at NBIA, Jerry Tamer. Thank you very much, Mr. Tamer, there for the uh, public forecast that is valid for today and tonight. Just for a recap, the weather is expected to be generally fair, breezy, with few light nighttime showers. The winds will be east-northeasterly at 12 to 22 miles per hour. Seas moderate to rough with waves of 6 to 8 feet in open waters. The temperature today will get up to 31.5 degrees Celsius. The sun will set at 5.40 p.m. and it would rise tomorrow morning, God's will, at 6.05 a.m. We are just to remind you that the marine advisory remains in effect. We take a quick break. When we come back, we've got much more to share with you. Remember, if you have flu symptoms, do the right thing and stay at home to avoid giving it to others. Remember, you can be infectious up to a week after developing symptoms, so rest up and take it easy. The world is facing a global pandemic of disastrous proportions and unfortunately it has not spared our beautiful island of Grenada. I have been here for the past week in conjunction with St. George's University, the Ministry of Health and our General Hospital providing all the assistance that I possibly can. Um, I am glad to say that the efforts on the ground are phenomenal. Not only are our physicians here and our Ministry of Health doing the best that we can, um, we also have a great deal of support from abroad in many physicians like myself. Um, I am glad to be here. Many cannot be, but we're doing all that we can. Unfortunately for COVID-19, right now we don't have many tried and true treatments. The best thing that we can do to save ourselves, to protect our families, to prevent to protect everyone is vaccination. We have several vaccines available to us in the world. Here in Grenada, we have the AstraZeneca and the Pfizer. I know there are many, many concerns about these vaccines being brand new. I can assure you that the technology is not. These have been tried and true and proven to be safe and effective. I know there are many, many concerns about pre-existing conditions, some namely high blood pressure, diabetes, liver disease, chronic kidney disease. I'm here to say if you have those conditions, you should be first in line for the vaccination. Please don't worry about it. It is safe and effective for you as well. If you are a pregnant woman, if you are a lactating mother, it is safe for you as well. Go ahead and get the vaccine. It is normal, it is expected to be scared at times like these. It is normal to have hesitancy. If you feel that way, please, please have a conversation with your health care provider. Have a conversation with a, health, with a trusted health care professional. They are here to help you. Please, if you have questions, don't go to Dr. Facebook. Don't go to Dr. Google. Don't go to Dr. Instagram. Trust your health care professionals, and I promise you we will guide you in the right direction. Unfortunately, I see it all too often for young people to get COVID and have long-lasting effects. So please don't count on your youth alone and your health to get you through this. 
you need all the protection you can get, and that is through vaccination right now. Unfortunately, in my practice in Indiana and here in Grenada, we see that unvaccinated patients just don't tend to do as well. Vaccinated patients have a much, much greater chance at coming through this without long-lasting effects. So please do all that you can to protect yourself. And welcome back. At this time, it is Monday morning. It is time for us to say a special good morning to the <clears throat> management and staff of the Marketing and National Importing Board. And we have with us once again Tamara Prosper, and she's here to give us an update as to what's happening on the MNIB corner. Good morning to you. Hi, Sherry. Good morning, and good morning to the viewing public. Okay, so tell us what's new. What's what's all what's new and exciting at MNIB? What what are we promoting today? What are we letting the 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 general public know that the MNIB has to offer? Great. So we use this opportunity every Monday on this platform to inform our customers, our our stakeholders, our farmers as to what is happening at MNIB. So firstly, we would like to thank all our participants that took part in our recent beef production workshop. Okay. This was held last Tuesday and Thursday, and the response was overwhelming. We had, our quota was 15 farmers, but we exceeded it. We went up to 20 farmers, and it included a workshop facilitated by Mr. Kenley Edwards and Troy Augustine of the Ministry of Agriculture. And this happened, a Zoom theoretical um, workshop was held on the Tuesday and a practical session was held on the Thursday. So it was really great. For farmers who are interested, we can send you the Zoom link so that you can look at it. It was recorded. So we want to use this opportunity to thank our farmers for coming out and being a part of this free workshop. Okay. The aim of this workshop is to promote the, the production of, of beet. We want it to be a sustainable um, produce, not only for local consumption, but for export as well. So we saw the merit in having a workshop as such. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> so we got the beet um, workshop out of the way. What's next? Right. So of course we have... Well, there will be more avenues for workshop like these, and this is in collaboration with our farm contracts. As a reminder, our farm contracts, our contracts that Marketing Board has with our farmers so that we have a guaranteed supply of certain produce from these specific farmers. So beet is one that we're trying to make sure that we can always get. Additionally, the Christmas season is coming up. And MNIB is going to start and unveil their Christmas promotion starting this Friday, whereby we have um, customers have the opportunity to shop and win. Shop over $40. You unscramble the word and you drop it into, well, you fill out your name, etc., and you drop it into our box and you get a chance to win goodies for the Christmas season. So there'll be words such as sorrel and ginger beer and black pig, words like these, you unscramble it, make sure you get the right answer, and you drop it into our boxes. Again, this is our chance to give back to our customers, to our farmers, and to have some merriment. Um, by today, you should be seeing all our workers with their Christmas hats, and there'll be some vegetables coming out of their Christmas hats. You know, the season is bleak in terms of the whole COVID situation, but we're trying to bring some chair, buy our vegetables, fruits and vegetables, <laughs> to okay. our customers. So that's part of our happenings. Um, we want to remind our customers that our TAM CC Delhi has reopened for the school session. So the younger folks, those who are part of the college, you can visit our MNIB TAM CC Delhi by Teachers Education. And we continue as well to buy and ask for produce from our farmers. So specifically, I'll use this opportunity to make a call for produce. We're looking for beet, broccoli, celery, thighs, thyme, 
carrots, Christophine, cucumber, eggplant, ginger, and ginger is a hot commodity, hot peppers, honeydew melon, lettuce, papaya, seasoning pepper, sweet potatoes, string beans, tanya, tomato, yams, passion fruit, red cabbage, and water nuts, right? So farmers, if you have, you can give us a call at 440-1791 and offer your produce for sale. You don't have to be a farmer. You can be a new farmer. Just call us and we will do business with you. So feel free. All right, Sherry, you want more? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> All right, great. But, and and so might, we might I ask you this question too? I realize you're mentioning all the different produce that the MNIB is looking for. But I know normally around this season, on as opposed to, to private persons, the MNIB normally look for golden apples and so you go out and you pick and you ship. Is that still part of what you do? It is still part of it. And the good thing about that is that we have some registered farmers with our contract. So okay. most of the times we have persons who would bring it in. They're accustomed to bringing in the golden apple. So we're getting a good amount of golden apple. And when we have a call for big batches of golden apple to export, we would put it out there for the, especially the golden apples and the sour sauce. So at present, we're getting a good supply of golden apples. So when the call is on, we'll make sure and use the GIS platform to ask farmers to bring in their produce. But we, we do. And export is going on. It's a huge priority on the MNIB mandate and agenda. So this do happen. Okay. So mm -hmm. what's next now? I realize you have a lot to share with us this morning. <laughs> So we continue to urge our customers to support the value added products and produce products that we offer, specifically our pulp. Our pulp, we sell golden apple pulp, we sell carambola, soursop, tamarind, all the fruits, the pulp. So you don't have to do the grating and the blending. It is in a bottle, it is in a, a packet for you to purchase from the MNIB, especially if you have a restaurant or you, you are cost, you're into the juice business. It's an excellent opportunity to buy the pulp from us. And we also have the smaller sizes at our outlets for regular customers like me and you we may have a kid and we want to make juice on a regular basis as opposed to the artificial juices. And again, this is an opportunity to boost your immune system with real juice, right? Then of course we have our Tanya Lock Pack, which is a hot commodity. It's a hot commodity. So we encourage persons to come on down to our outlets, lots of value in woodlands to, to, to purchase the Tanya Lock Pack. If you are interested in selling it as a shopkeeper, as a supermarket, give us a call and we'll be, we'll, we'll, um, supply you with our Tanya log. Also, we have CMOS for sale. And also we encourage you to buy the produce, the product, sorry, that we have from our agro processors. So we have um, seasonings, we have wines, we have golden apple stew, we have ground nut sugar cake, we have the spices themselves. So we encourage persons to shop at MNIB. It's a one-stop shop. We also have meat. We also have um, poultry. So you can do your buying of your dry goods, white sugar, brown sugar, milk, rice. We have it all for you. Okay, and, and I know that we will, November today is the 15th and we're coming close to the end. And so um, in terms of your your different outlets and the opening hours, would we be seeing an increase in, in, in the time for opening hours and so? We see yes, that well, we will be increasing our, so. extending our... Okay. our hours to capitalize on more shopping and so but as the time gets closer we will definitely outline that to our customers and it's also an opportunity to you know reap what we may have missed during the covid and the lockdown so we'll definitely be extending our shopping hours and also remember we are open in our grand dance branch on sundays so if you have no time during the week you can also come in to us on a Sunday in Grandes and shop from nine to one. 
But of course, Sherry, you're right, and we will be extending our hours for the convenience of shoppers. So Christmas, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, keep on to our Facebook page, and you would know a lot of what is happening with the MNIB. And feel free to call us. Well, uh, Tamara, this is where we say thank you very much for sharing with us here this morning. What's happening at the MNIB? Viewers, now you know. You can check them out. Those of you who have your golden apples, I hear there as she's asking um, for ginger bay and sorrel and all these different um, produce. Once you have them, you don't have to be a registered farmer, but it has to be your produce. You can make link with the MNIB and get yourself some much needed dollars for the season. We take a break. When we come back, we've got much more to share with you. especially after coughing or sneezing into a tissue. Hey Jaden, I heard you did a wonderful project Unhealthy on unhealthy snacks. Can you tell me the effects of unhealthy ones? Hi Ella, I'm fine and you? Sorry, I just wanted to say it before I forget. I'm fine, thanks. Answer now please, I have my notebook to think. Okay, when we eat unhealthy snacks very often and in large amounts, they can affect our memory and lose focus in class. They can be very moody, they can damage our teeth, we can gain too much weight, we can even develop chronic diseases like diabetes, cancer, heart disease and more. Oh no, that's so scary. I will really try not to eat unhealthy snacks. We should encourage our friends to do the same. Thank you, Jaden. Choose healthier snacks for a healthier you. Yes, yes, we look forward to seeing you as well. I'm taking my best shot to keep the tourism sector going. A message from the Ministry of Health. The enumeration for National Population and Housing Census will begin from the 10th of November 2021. This means residents of the Tri-Island State can expect to see officers of the Central Statistical Office visiting your home and communities to conduct census enumeration. In an effort to ensure the safety of all residents and field workers alike, here is some important information we want you to know. Residents, you have the option of conducting your census interview via telephone. This has been the new main mode adopted in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, our field officers must visit your home to acquire the correct contact information for doing so and other basic information about your household. If you are comfortable with conducting the interview face-to-face -face with enumerators, you are free to do so as well. But the COVID-19 protocols for face-to-face -face interviews must be adopted. When a census enumerator approaches your home, he or she should be wearing a mask, face shield, central statistical office branded reflector vest, and the census identification card. The ID card should have displayed the coat of arms, the official census logo, the officer's full name, picture, signature, and the signature of the director of statistics before an interview with a household. Enumerators should ensure their face mask and shield is properly fitted on their face. If an adjustment is needed, this must be done before approaching respondents. Enumerators' hands must be sanitized as well. When approaching the household, enumerators should kindly request the respondents wear a mask. This will keep both the respondents and the interviewers safe in a face-to-face -face interview. The enumerator must ensure there is at least six feet distance between them and the respondent. Physical contact should be avoided. Interviews should be conducted in an open, well-ventilated space. 
it is preferred that the interview be carried out on the veranda or in a yard. For confidentiality, enumerators must ensure that no one else is in close proximity of the interview. Contact information from the enumerators should be provided to households in case they have any questions or in the event someone gets sick with COVID-19, it can be traced. If an enumerator comes to your home and you are not present, a callback card will be left on your premises. Please call back the number on the card to arrange your census interview. And remember, we all count. Let's do our part to ensure a brighter, more secure, and sustainable future for all. This has been a message by the Central Statistical Office, Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, Physical Development, and Energy, Grenada. Dreaming of taking a break and escaping to an idyllic, happy place? Well, finding it does not require you to go too far. You already live in paradise. All it takes is for you to go out and discover it. Grenada, Karakou, and Petit Martinique are blessed with a wide variety of accommodation that satisfy any taste and budget. Find the one that suits you and your family and treat yourself while having peace of mind that your health and safety is a priority. Knowing that we have gorgeous waterfalls, stunning beaches, and flavorful cuisine, let's be tourists in our own islands and enjoy paradise at home. Use a bin. Keep our islands clean. Tourism is everybody's business. This message is brought to you compliment the Grenada Tourism Authority. Stop the spread of germs that can make you and others sick. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. If you don't have a tissue, use your elbow. <coughs> Wash hands often, especially after coughing or sneezing into a tissue. Welcome back. Joining us now is the Public Relations Officer at the Child Protection Authority, Janet Hamlet Grant. And as we're well aware, we know due to the, the pandemic and most of the issues that, that, that surrounded the hosting of um, the observance of Child Month, Child Month was pushed from October as per usual to November this year. And she is here this morning to speak with us, to speak to us about Child Month. In particular, we are going to look at some, some tips as it relates to the Childman team and uh, also, you know, just some general information from the Child Protection Authority. Uh, we know the from the time we hear Childman, we used to see these, these, these little things like love the child, protect the child, don't abuse, you know, child abuse, yes, child, child care, yes, child abuse, no, and, and those sorts of slogans. But things have evolved over 
although that particular slogan is still very relevant, but things have evolved. So this morning we have Janelle with us, and Janelle is going to share with us some tips as it relates to the whole observance of child month and, and so forth. Good morning to you once again, Janelle. Good morning, Sherry. And it feels different not being in studio with you this morning. Well, we, but nonetheless, we know <laughs> <laughs> yes, the times that we're in, we have to adjust to suit. And thank God, information can go through whatever right. means um, are available. Yes. So, um, on behalf of the Child Protection Authority, I want to begin by saying Happy Child Month to every child in Grenada, Caracou, and Petite Martinique. We know things are a bit different this time around, but that does not make you any less special, right? As the Child Protection Authority, we 100% endorse the Ministry of Education, who is the one spearheading the Child Month celebration with our activities this month. As we know, the theme for Child Month this month is children's care and education matters let children grow glow and flourish and as a child protection authority we endorse this theme because aside from intervention or responding to cases of child abuse brought to our attention we also endorse and promote the prevention of abuse in the first place so for child month we have two activities that we are pushing that we are spearheading on our end to buffer the theme. The first campaign that we have is a social media campaign. For those of you who follow our pages, we are posting one electronic poster every day of the work week as it relates to helping parents and guardians care for children to love the child, to help the child grow, glow, and flourish. The other activity that we are doing, as you can see them on the screen now, the other activity that we have in conjunction with the Ministry of Education are two Zoom sessions with parents speaking about how we can help children to grow, glow, and flourish at home. And in those sessions, we'll be speaking about practical ways in which we can help our children to enjoy home in a safe way, right? So this morning, I know that um, we don't have much time. This morning, I wish to share some of the tips that we have been putting out there that's certainly not new, but very relevant, especially at this time. So remember the theme says, children's care and education matters. In terms of the education aspect of it, the Ministry of Education will take on as it relates to the school and different things like that. But from the Child Protection Authority point of view, we also want to stress the importance of educating children on their rights, right? There is a document called the Universal Rights of the Child and we believe that each child should be aware of the information therein. There are about 54 articles, and there is a summarized child-friendly version of it that we're encouraging parents and guardians to pull up on the internet on your devices, let the children who are old enough go on and research it themselves to learn the rights that belong to them as children, right? By knowing so, they can go about their daily lives knowing that certain things they deserve to have, like life and health and information and proper education and nutrition and so forth. So children can know when their rights are being infringed upon. So in summary, that's one of our first tips that we have out there. Let children be acquainted with their rights as children. And as adults, we can go in and research it and also break it down to their level. Another tip that we have in terms of education is know the role of the home. The home is the first institution of education. School is a learning house, yes, but before the child can learn anything in the school, they have to exist in their home. They have to socialize at home, learn how to speak, learn their manners and all those different things from the parents and those who they socialize with at home. So we're encouraging everyone heads of household to make home a learning environment, a learning, a positive learning environment. So the music that we play, the words that we use, the behaviors that we display, all those are teaching and learning moments. So let us make that extra effort to know that their eyes looking on, no matter how young they're learning and they're taking it into, into consideration. Okay, so this is what's being done. So probably this is how things should be done. So we should not take it for granted that children, no matter how old they are, or how young they are, they are learning from us. So we need to make that extra effort to educate them, even if it's unconsciously. 
Then on care, we want to remind parents and guardians and teachers and anyone who has influence in the lives of children that they, how we treat them today could very well determine how they treat others tomorrow or how they treat us when we get older, right? So kind words, kind actions, impact them for the positive and the same also obtains for the negative so we have to make that effort to be kind and i know sometimes you know children may seem to be a bit challenging and as the adults we get upset and we say things in the heat of the moment that we wish we can take back mm -hmm. and many of the times we don't take we can't take it back but we don't apologize either let us teach our children that when we make mistakes we can't own up to it and say i'm sorry i should not have said that i was upset at the moment please forgive me. You know, in the Caribbean, we believe that by doing, telling a child those words, we, we are being, you know, we're submitting ourselves to them. And that's not the case. We're just teaching children to be responsible and to be able to apologize when they do or say things that are not right. So remember how we treat them today will determine how they treat others or even us tomorrow, right? Children who have never experienced adequate care for themselves may go on to be parents who don't know how to care for their children just the same. So we need to be mindful of that. And there's a quote that says, and I really like this quote, it says, if children live with hostility, they will learn to fight. If they live with fairness, they will learn justice. If they live with kindness and consideration, they will learn respect. So it doesn't take a lot for us to teach children the values that are necessary in this life right so that was the first part of the theme and then now speaking about growing we need to as parents and guardians and those who have the power to care for children to ensure that they have all that they need to thrive in life and we could begin from the very basic the food the clothing the shelter you know, the clean environment, sometimes we take that for granted. We don't have to have a mansion, but whatever space that we have, once we maintain it clean and we have what is necessary for them to develop in terms of physical development, it will go a long way. And so even financial responsibility, prioritizing and placing the money where it's needed the most in terms of the children's care. Sometimes as parents, we may have to forego some of the things that we want in order to supply our children's needs. So we need to be mindful and really weigh and see what is important and place the money in that direction so that the children can have their needs. I'm not saying to totally ignore your wants because sometimes it's good to treat yourself, but you just need to know when. So you need to have that wisdom and that prudence as to how you manage your money so that you can ensure that nutritious food is fed to the children, that they have clean drinking water, that the environment is clean and safe, and that protection, protection from abuse and other forms of harm is something that is actively pursued within the home and on glowing and flourishing glowing is simply being happy how can children be happy you know what can we do to ensure that there's a smile on their face or that they're contented and that they have this inner joy and peace and that's catering for their emotional and psychological well-being being the parents or the one in charge of the child, they need to know that they belong at home they belong in the classroom they belong in this world you know, don't treat them as outcasts. Sometimes they may have challenging behaviors, but don't treat them as outcasts. Know that challenging behaviors are cries for help. How can we make that child smile today? How can we make that child believe in themselves? How can we motivate them to reach for higher, to do better? Many of the times it's by being a good example to them and accepting them for who they are. Um, we had a video, we have a video actually out there um, outlining some of those tips in a very simple way and just simply motivating a child and telling them you can do it and when they do it celebrating them can go a very long way so that's one way we can help children to glow to smile to be kind to others and to flourish so many of those tips are online already and some of the others that are non that are not online will be up soon because every day of the month 
that's from Monday to Friday, the work week, we will be uploading tips. So we are encouraging people to go to Child Protection Authority Grenada on our Facebook page, our Twitter page, our Instagram page, and you can even go on YouTube and look for the video that we have with those tips so that you can get those practical, um, that practical information and how we can help children to glow, grow, and flourish. And finally, I want to encourage the parents who will be invited to the Zoom session. The first one is gonna be on Wednesday. We are encouraging you to take, accept that invitation. Come and interact with us and come and learn, you know, those practical tips and come and learn about the home. You know, sometimes we think we just take home for granted. It's like four walls with some furniture inside, a roof over it, but there's so much more to the home. Come learn about what the home really is about, the role that the home should play in the child's life and how we as adults can go about making life a bit more bearable for all the members within the home by doing that what is expected of us, right? So I wanna thank GIS for the opportunity to share some of these tips. And I look forward probably later on in the month, we can still come in and share some more tips or probably um, play some more of the content that we're creating to create that awareness for parents, guardians, community members, and everyone who interacts with children. Not only this month, but throughout the year, because every single day we should be looking out for children and doing what is in their best interest. Well, Jana, we here at GS, we want to thank you very much, Shu, for coming along and sharing with us. Um, we we um, endorse the sentiments, children need all the care and so in order to grow, grow, glow and flourish. So once again, thank you very much for sharing with us. Viewers, we were speaking there with Shannon Hamlet from the Child Protection Authority. She is the uh, the public relations officer and she shared with us a number of important tidbits there as it relates to um, caring for children and observing their behaviors and putting them in environments that will be conducive for them to grow and learn properly um just before we wrap the program because we're going to wrap a little earlier today i just want to share with you a very important notice from the supreme court of grenada and that is for jury duty it's a jury orientation exercise it's a reschedule of that event the office of the registrar hereby informs all persons who have been summoned to appear before the supreme court of grenada in the exercise of jury duty that the orientation exercises previously scheduled for the 13th and the 14th of September 2021, have been rescheduled to Tuesday, November 16th for one day only according to the particulars in the table before, below. So those of you who've been identified and you fall within the surnames ending within the blocks A to D, you would um, report to the Grenada Trade Center 9 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. Those of you whose surnames is within the blocks E to H, 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m., uh, J to M, 12.15 to 1.30 p.m., and N to W, 2.15 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., and all this is happening at the Grenada Trade Center. Tomorrow, Tuesday, the 16th day of November, that's for those of you who have been contacted to do ex um, jury duties. Now, should you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to communicate with us, meaning those at the registrar, any one of the following coordinates registrar acting zamora cherubin foresight 440-2030 extension 62000 or you can send an email to registrar at scr.gov.gd deputy registrar acting melissa garway 440-2030 extension 62007 and the email is deputy registrar at scr.gov.gd and the court administrator and deputy administrator, Paula Cato and Katrin Charles, they're at 440-2030, extension 62024 and 62025, respectively, court admin at scr.gov.gd. And just to remind you, those of you who have been invited to perform jury duties, that orientation session will happen tomorrow morning, God's will at the Grenada Trade Center, surnames A to D, 9 to 10, 15, E to H, 10, 30 to 12 p.m., J to M, 12, 15 to 1, 30 p.m., and N to W, 2, 15 to 3, 30 p.m. 
And with this information, we come to the end of our program for this morning. On behalf of the entire team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing. As Grenada observes Child Month 2021 with a difference, we at the Child Protection Authority encourage parents, guardians, and community members to also go the extra mile in showing your appreciation to the child. These tough times are also affecting our children. So this month, be someone who shows care. C. Communicate with us in a clear and positive manner. A. Accept us for who we are. R. Remember your responsibilities towards us. E. Ensure our homes, schools, and community are safe and abuse free. Child Month comes around once a year, but our commitment to ensuring that children are treated with love, dignity, and respect should never end. From the Child Protection Authority. Ill cut backs. Avoid the most common causes of spreading the flu. Waste hand sanitizer.